working to stay ahead of the innovation curve and foster the next generation of business. Long Island entrepreneurs are pushing forward to support job creation and new startup initiatives. The density of startups that you have in other areas that attract the capital, that make it worth mm -hmm. investors coming from other regions to pay attention to this region isn't there yet. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things that we identified as a challenge but also an opportunity. The region faces many challenges in the new high-tech world. We explore how Long Island can compete with other areas of the country in the race to the top. The money is going to flow to talent and particularly talent that have great ideas and creating great companies around those ideas. Uh, we have the talent on Long Island. It's all straight ahead on this edition of the Long Island Business Report. Funding for this program has been made possible by Charlotte and David Eckert and the Rausch Foundation. And now from Malloy College at the Madison Theater, here's Jim Paymar with the Long Island Business Report. Hello and thank you for being with us. I'm Jim Paymar with the Long Island Business Report. In this edition, we look at the next generation of business on Long Island and what the experts say needs to be done to promote job growth and stimulate the island's economy. Joining me to discuss this is Mark Lesko. He is the executive director of Accelerate Long Island, an organization committed to promoting startup companies. And also with me is Mark Faziano. He's the managing director of venture capital firm Can Rock Ventures. Thanks uh, so much for being with us today. Uh, Long Island uh, is a great place to live. Uh, we've got close to three million people here. Uh, we've got great beaches, but our economy has not been growing perhaps as fast as we would like. In fact, there are some who say it's on a downward trajectory. So the big question that many people ask is, how do we get things going again? And you guys are at the forefront of it. Mark Lesko, you are in charge of Accelerate Long Island, which is a new agency. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you're doing. Well, Accelerate was formed to help create an entrepreneurial ecosystem here on Long Island. Uh, and this is the latest in a series of efforts to do that. Uh, but this one, I think, really has tremendous promise. And the reason is because the major research institutions on Long Island, along with the leading venture capitalists like Mark, have banded together for the first time, collaborated for the first time, to create an organization named Accelerate Long Island. And how do we do this? Well, we employ early stage financing for startup companies. We provide a, a targeted professional assistance to help them get formed, help protect their intellectual property, and so forth. And the bigger challenge is really how do you grow the ecosystem, the entrepreneurial ecosystem? Mm -hmm. It's tough to put a finger on it, but other regions of the country are doing this as we speak. Mm -hmm. We're playing catch up to a degree, but we have some wonderful assets like Mark's firm and his portfolio companies, all the way up to Hofstra, Stony Brook, Cold Spring Harbor, North Shore LIJ, and Brookhaven Lab, and those are the founding members of Accelerate Long Island. And Mark Faziano, I gotta call you Mark, because uh, you're Mark Lesko, Mark Faziano, but Mark Faziano, you started a company called Fat wire a number of years ago yep. and uh, you sold it off to Oracle and that's how you kind of spun off into a venture capital firm. Now you have a, a bunch of little companies. But you're one of the few venture capital firms on Long Island. Why? Why don't we have more of that going on here? The reason why we're a venture capital firm to begin with is because we know that you can build technology companies on Long Island. So Fatwire was a great example of being able to build a software company we're based right in Mineola, mm -hmm. and so we know it's possible to do. So part of the uh, being the first ones to the party, let's say, um, there have been other venture capitalists in the past, but the reason why it's not a vibrant area is because there's, it's very spread out, Long Island. We mm -hmm. have a lot of the key ingredients that you need for a vibrant area, but we're, 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 it's a Long Island. It's, a, it's very spread out. <laughs> so, so as a result, the density of startups that you have in other areas that attract the capital, that make it worth mm -hmm. investors coming from other regions to pay attention to this region isn't there yet. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things that we identified as a challenge, but also an opportunity. So when there's not that much uh, supply, you know, we're contrarian, like a lot of entrepreneurs will be, mm -hmm. we think that's an opportunity and to be able to rally the regional entrepreneurs, be able to find and create a uh, essentially a home for them in a way that it's clustered. And unlike my experience in growing up Fatwire, mm -hmm. have it so it's not so lonely, mm -hmm. you know, where mm -hmm. you've got one company here and the next software company is 25 minute drive away. Right. 
the thing that's, if I could just sure. uh, add to that, the thing that's so uh, amazing about Long Island, you mentioned a region with three million people. We're t 25 to 50 miles away from the venture capital capital of the world mm -hmm. in New York City. Mm -hmm. We have three or four venture funds that are active. That's it. Mm -hmm. And that venture capital money that's sitting in New York City and even north in Boston, it's not going east to Long Island. Mm -hmm. It's going west, it's going south, it's going north, it's not going east. Mm -hmm. So along with efforts like Mark's, um, I think one of the things that Accelerate Long Island is going to focus on is introducing Long Island and the Mark Facianos on Long Island mm -hmm. to the New York City venture capital community. But what do we have that Silicon Valley doesn't have or Silicon Alley in New York City or the beltway around Boston or Washington or the Roanoke Triangle? Mm -hmm. What do we have to offer that they don't already have out there? You know, I, I think it's not so much, and I, I think this kind of question is, what do we have that they don't have or what do they have that we don't have? Mm -hmm. I think the core uh, question should be how do we maximize what we do have mm -hmm. so we don't have to be identical to Silicon Valley we don't have to be identical to Waterloo Ontario mm -hmm. what we have to do is we have to take the unique assets that we have we have to learn from these other regions for sure but we need to be able to to tie these together and that's what Accelerate Long Island is trying mm -hmm. to do and that is since there since we are spread out how do we create a network first those relationships that are key to that ecosystem mm -hmm to create those companies. When we, when we formed Accelerate Long Island, and Mark was involved in that process, uh, we hired a consultant from Silicon Valley mm -hmm. to help us think through these issues. Uh, and, and he and another uh, fellow from uh, St. Louis who helped us, they were amazed at our assets. So you ask, what do we have that makes us nationally competitive? Mm -hmm. uh, we have a national lab. Uh, we're on one of only 10 locations in the country that has a national lab. Mm. We have Cold Spring Harbor Lab, which is a world-class research facility, right. cancer research, genomics, and so forth. Right. We have wonderful research taking place at North Shore LIJ's Feinstein Institute, Stony Brook University, Hofstra. We have a major multinational corporation in CA Technologies mm -hmm. in the software space. I mean, these are huge assets, mm -hmm. and we need to leverage those assets to be competitive. So we start with the network building, but this is a this is a national competition. Mm -hmm. Regions all across the country mm -hmm. want to create innovation-based economies. Mm -hmm. This is the key to our economic future as a country. And if we don't step up and engage, we're going to be left behind. Okay. And how do we step up and engage? Well, I think that creating Accelerate Long Island is step step one to be able to identify all of these assets. So. Mark just listed off the, the Research Institute assets. Right. There are other assets. The fact that we've got a big enough population base of mm -hmm. almost three million people. We've got a transit system, which is outstanding. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody complains about traffic in and <laughs> yeah, out of the city. Of I do too, who yeah. doesn't? But we have a train system, uh -huh. which is the first or second most uh, used train system in the country. Right. So it's a huge asset to get startup companies mm -hmm. to either recruit from uh, both Long Island, but also from the city, but also to get those companies to be focused on a major market that we've got mm -hmm. in our backyard. What about incubating companies? Because that's what you're doing right now, yeah. Mark, out in Hicksville, correct? Yep. You've got a group of small companies and you're, and you're feeding them technology yep. and networking them. How is yep. that working? Right, well, uh, we do have in Hicksville, we have about uh, 11,000 square feet where we have all of these small companies together in a big open trading floor style which is modeled on other regions that Mark and I and others that are involved with Accelerate have gone out to other regions to find out how they have built up their successful ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So looking at models of San Diego, of Chicago, uh, Waterloo, Ontario, St. Louis, to see physically what does it look like? Is it look like office spaces you know, that are traditional or, is it, or are they physically laid out differently? Mm -hmm. We found out that what, what companies thrive on is this constant interaction, constant informal, uh, you know, connections that are made, you know, at the water cooler, at the, at the uh, you know, uh, have, getting a cup of coffee. Right. That kind of Getting vibrant. groups of people together, binding Absolutely. them together, ideas generate that way. That's right. One of the things that's, that's missing, and we, I've, we've identified this as a gap, and it's, it's come out of these discussions with other regions, is kind of two related uh, things. One is early stage capital. Uh, mm -hmm. And one of the things we've com we've started right out of the box with Accelerate and Mark are two companion seed funds, really, by all accounts, the two first two seed funds in the history of Long Island. Uh, Mark's fund is a private fund. Our fund is funded with public dollars. Uh, together, we have a million two hundred fifty thousand dollars to invest in early stage companies. That didn't exist, uh, mm -hmm. and we're working closely with the Long Island Angel Network to provide early stage funding for companies. What's missing? Um, 
it's this culture where it, it, you know folks in the business community, wealthy uh, families, individuals, and so forth, um, see as part of their civic obligation promoting the startup community. Mm -hmm. uh, that happens in Silicon Valley. It's like oxygen. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you get involved in startup companies. You're an angel investor. You're a mentor. You see it as part of uh, you know your obligation, but it's also a ton of fun. Mm -hmm. um, you're dealing with these young, energetic, 20-something entrepreneurs starting up these companies full of energy and ideas. It's a blast. Yeah. So that's what we have to communicate to all of Long Island is get involved in this effort to remake our economy and have some fun. Money. I mean, that's <laughs> uh, the, the energy of business, right? And, uh, you know, you, I used to live out in the Silicon Valley area, and you had Kleiner Perkins, and you had Sequoia Capital. I mean, these were monster funds. Yep. And, what I mean, you know, you get the Apples and the Googles of the world started uh, with, with that kind of capital. Yep. Do we have that? So Mark really touched on it, uh, and I think it's, it's one of the key aspects. When you look at the beginning of Silicon Valley, it started really small. It mm -hmm. started from individuals, exactly like Mark described. You look for those successful you know, business people, whatever industry they came from, and they don't have to come from technology. They band together, they identify this as an opportunity, a business opportunity, mm -hmm. but also a civic opportunity. And they organize themselves in order to direct that capital to worthy projects. That's how it starts. Yeah. It doesn't start with you know five billion dollar funds. It right. starts with much smaller yeah. funds. Oh, and, and you mentioned that, that you know there are billions of dollars sitting right thirty seven minutes from here in That's New right. York City. Right. Yeah. Uh, how do we get those folks out here to realize the assets that we have to meet folks like you to go to the Stony Brook uh, campus to to go to Cold Spring Harbor and yep. and realize the potential. Show them deal flow and show them talent. I mean, it, re it really it boils down to the money is going to flow to talent, and particularly mm -hmm. talent that have great ideas and creating great companies around those ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the talent on Long Island, uh, and part of what Accelerate is doing is kind of playing the role of talent scout, yeah. going out and meeting with these talented entrepreneurs, connecting them to the ecosystem, getting them next to folks like Mark so that he can know who they are, number one, and help mm -hmm. mentor them, number two. Uh, the money will come. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, money goes where good ideas exist, and 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 we believe that we have good ideas. We've got great, talented people uh, on Long Island. You know, part of the challenge that we face on Long Island is, let's face it, you know, we educate some of the most talented entrepreneurs in the country. Unfortunately, a lot of them leave Long Island mm -hmm. and they go mm -hmm. elsewhere. Mm -hmm. A part of this effort, long term, is to create that hotbed of activity, mm -hmm. that innovation economy, so that we keep our young people and they want to start companies here on Long Island as opposed to out in Silicon Valley. Okay. I, was, I was at a tech conference just to yeah, accentuate sure. uh, or underline what Mark is saying. I was at a tech conference, I didn't think I told you the story before, but, uh, and I was at a dinner, uh, so it was one of these tech conferences in the city, it was mm -hmm. run by an investment bank called Needham, and, uh, and they were having a dinner for all the speakers and people who are participating. So I'm at a table for dinner with about eight people uh, around it, and everyone was either an investor or a CEO of a very promising mm -hmm. company. And so, you know, you're chit-chatting, you're finding out where people were from. Half of the people in the table were from Long Island. <laughs> Half. Yeah. And so, and, and none of them were on Long Island. You know, uh -huh. so Silicon Valley or Boulder, right. wherever they, they were left. from. And, uh, you know, some, one of them even went to my high school. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I didn't know who it was. It was uh, but the, the point is, is that that talent, we are growing that talent. And mm -hmm. we're losing that talent. And we think that that, I mean, I grew up here. I went away to school and mm -hmm. came back. Uh, Mark didn't grow up here, but he saw enough in this region that he came here. Right. Um, it is an attractive place to live. It's attractive, but it's also extremely expensive, and we've got a lot of young people who are leaving the island, and they're going sure. elsewhere because the cost of living is cheaper, and maybe there are greater job opportunities. I mean, how do we staunch that flow? See, I, I, I uh, have to say I disagree a bit with that premise, okay. and I'll tell you why. Because Silicon Valley is expensive. Boston's right. expensive. That's New York City is expensive. You're very right. Uh, <laughs> you know, even Seattle is expensive. Uh, and you look at emerging communities like Austin, Texas, and Pittsburgh, and elsewhere. I mean, they're cheaper to live, cheaper places to live, but still you're going to pay for your house and pay for your, your cost of yeah. living. Uh, but when you look at the prime ecosystems, mm -hmm. Boston, New York City, Silicon Valley, very, costly. very, very expensive. Extremely. And so, you know, my, my point is that, you know, excellence is going to attract excellence. Mm -hmm. 
no matter what the cost of living is. And frankly, our cost of living does translate into some benefits for folks. You know, it's a great school system, great place to live, you're near the water, you're near the city. I mean, there's a reason why it costs so much to live right. on Long Island because it's a pretty cool place to live well, if you know Long Island. Uh, how do we promote Long Island then? How do we get the word out to the folks who are in Austin or Seattle or some of the other tech hubs that this is a place to do good business? Because, you know, Long Island does, has an identity crisis. I mean, really, a lot of people don't even know where it is. You know, they just, oh yeah, you're next to New York City. Mm -hmm. I, uh, heard a, I heard somebody give a speech about Long Island and kind of along those lines, and he's, he said, Long Island isn't just about Joey Buttafuoco. And, <laughs> and, and it's not, you know, it's about Mark Fasciano and Jeff Leventhal at Work Market and Colin Goddard who was at OSI Pharmaceuticals. Right. You know, n international level entrepreneurs. Right. And, you know, we need to get that message out. You've, you put your finger on it though. It's, it's that secret element, that buzz mm -hmm. that needs to be created about Long Island. And that's what really accelerates all about. That's what Mark's efforts are all about. Uh, and uh, we talk about that as a board. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, how do we create that buzz around what's going on on Long Island? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we'll get there. Yeah. And, uh, and when we do, it'll be an exciting place to be. Mark, what's the most exciting thing going on right now within your group of companies? Um, you know, I would say that the, the thing that I get the most excited about is seeing how this network starts to work. As I mentioned, when I grew up, my first company, very isolated. We did a good job. You know, it ultimately mm -hmm. created a lot of jobs and a lot of, uh, a lot of value. But we were on our own. So in, now you've got much more, much more rapid development of companies. And I'll give you a, a for instance. And this is a company to see how, that net, how this network works. Mark Lesko, who's even before he started as his, uh, officially started as the head of, of uh, Accelerate Long Island, is a natural connector. He can't help it. He's, uh, this is just who he is. And so he heard about a successful entrepreneur uh, named Ken Gatz, who had built up another uh, successful company and was interested in uh, a, a new type of product and service called crowdfunding for equity, which ah, is, yeah. which is created, an opportunity was created or inspired at least by the Jobs Act. And so Mark remembered, gee, this, this is something that one of Mark's, my portfolio companies, mm -hmm is working on Karma mm -hmm. 411. He says, I'm going to introduce Ken to, to Mark, mm -hmm. to me. And I, I wouldn't have met Ken otherwise. Mm -hmm. And by making that connection, within about three months, we create a joint venture between Ken Gatz, uh, Karma, and, and Ken Rock to form a company called Proceeder. About, let's say, about a million dollars is earmarked for that business mm -hmm. to get it off the ground. That's how companies are started. And that is, that's the network effect. That, for me, is very, very exciting. What about what about big companies? We have some companies on Long Island that have billions of dollars in revenues sure. per year. Okay, we have yep. we have a lot of Fortune 500 companies located here. Is there a way to group them into what you're talking about? I mean, because it's in their sure. best interest to make sure that Long Island is a dynamic place sure. to live and yeah. work. Well, I, there's there's many different roles those large companies can play. And CA Technology sits on our on our board, as does one of the largest law firms, uh, Farrell Fritz. Mm -hmm. Ernst North and Shore, Young is North on our Shore board. LIJ. North Shore LIJ is on our board. Mm -hmm. So, you, you, in some instances, some of these larger companies have their own venture funds that could provide capital. Mm -hmm. Um, their markets unto themselves. Uh, the North Shore LIJ health system is, I think by all accounts, one of the top two or three health systems in the New York City metropolitan area. They have right. 40,000 employees. Yeah, I know. You know, just on healthcare IT alone, mm -hmm. I think they have a five-year plan for over uh, upwards of a billion dollars mm -hmm. uh, of business. That's a huge market, and they have to see themselves as a market. Um, and so, and, and frankly, as uh, civic presences in the, uh, in the region, um, we want to get them engaged in this effort because it, it benefits them, it, it, it improves our quality of life for their employees, for their executives, um, and you know, from a civic standpoint, I think it's, it, it would be helpful to get them involved. The other thing is, that's a pool of mentors. Mm -hmm. You know, these, these mm -hmm. companies are, are in business, they're successful, uh, they're successful for reasons because they're people and they're talented. Right people that work at these companies, get them involved in mentoring some of these smaller mm -hmm. companies. Decentralization. Mm. We're a very decentralized island, you know, I mean, I think there's like 300 different communities yep. here on the, on, on the island. And th there's no, like, critical mass anywhere. There's yep. no hub. Yep. And, and you were talking about that in Hicksville, like yep. how you can bring people together, companies together to make this thing work, you know, so it becomes an ecosystem, sure. so to speak. Uh, what what can be done 
beyond what you're doing individually and what you're doing, can we get the state involved? Can we get Suffolk uh, County and Nassau County involved to push this thing? Well, it's already starting to happen. Yeah. Uh, uh, in terms of state involvement and, and getting more of that to happen is, is what gets these regions off the ground, like, uh, you know, like the ones we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. But for instance, uh, Thoughtbox, which is uh, right now in Hicksville, is a project that was recognized in 2011 as a transformational project by the Regional Economic Development Council. Um, and that was awarded a $3 million grant in order to support the construction of that essentially incubator. Mm -hmm. And it's not just for Canrock companies, it's for any technology company that's you know, of, that, uh, you know, of that early stage, you know, in that early stage mm -hmm. segment. And so those are starting. Uh, mm -hmm. There are pockets that are around and it's the density that's really important so that you can get things like joint ventures happening. Right. Like you can have more of a reason for an outside investor to come in, more reason to visit. So for instance, when we're recruiting board members, which now is happening very regularly, what's much better story than having one board member come in, let's say it's a retired uh, you know, executive from Wall Street, mm -hmm. much better to have them come in and visit and, and walk around and see eight different companies and you know have them connect with one it, of course and just having you know four people in a room and say you're gonna be a board member of you know this little tiny baby company so it's it gives much more of a sense of life it's um, you, you know a thought leader in the, on this topic is uh, Richard Florida he's written about the creative class and mm -hmm. how uh, when you attract the creative class you create this energy in a community <clears> and it, it kind of has a ripple effect um, and, and you know there's certain classes of creative types uh, artists researchers um, we tend to believe that entrepreneurs uh, are a creative class that is missing in terms of density in certain locations. Um, so we talk a lot about that mm -hmm. uh, and areas. And the natural fits are, are, are transit-oriented destinations, uh, TOD they call it, uh, train stations, uh, because of the, the ability to get in and out of the city and reverse commute. So places like you know Hicksville, uh, like Mineola, like uh, Huntington, when I was supervisor of Brookhaven, we talked about Ron Concom mm -hmm. as a new type of place like that. Right. Um, you know, th those are the, the natural places. Really, though, you, you, you gotta you gotta kind of be in tune with what's happening out on the street, so mm -hmm. to speak. And where are young people going at night? You know, these young folks that write code all day, you know, write software programs. <laughs> they want to have fun at they night. They want to blow it out at night. You know, they have the earphones on of and course. they're tapping yeah, at their computer yeah. for 10 hours yeah. or 12 hours. They want to go have a drink or go to a you know, show or something. Where are they going? Yeah. You know, where are they living? That's what we have to really tap into. But the, the other thing is, is you go to Silicon Valley, you've got Stanford there. Right. And, uh, you, you know, you've got San Francisco and you've got these communities and, 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 you, and, and you've got Menlo Park and Cupertino and all these places that are developing these companies. Yep. Same thing in Boston, you've got MIT and you've got Harvard and then you've got all of these uh, biotech companies that are forming around there, all these technology companies. How, can we do that here? Well, we're, we're a suburb, right? We shouldn't forget we're a suburb. We're, we're a suburb, We're of always course. going to be a suburb. And when you look outside of Boston, when you look outside of Silicon Valley, right. where, what Silicon Valley was, it's not the major metro. It's not the part of San Francisco where they started. It actually started outside. Right. Uh, you know, same thing. Uh, you know, Microsoft wasn't in the heart of, uh, of Seattle. It's mm -hmm. outside of Seattle. Right. So, the, the what Mark was mentioning, and that is the flexibility to be able to get by transit to the major metro mm -hmm. area like San Francisco is a big attractor. You right. know, that's why it's maybe not in the middle of Utah. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, but on the same time, it's, it's cheaper uh, to essentially house your people. You know, your, your, your rent is gonna be cheaper in the suburb. Right. And you, got, you have a lot of people who wanna just live in the suburbs. Uh, you know, after you've gotten through your 20s and your 30s, maybe your time to settle right. down, chances are you're gonna be in the suburbs. You've raised you know, the we're, okay. we're running out of time. Sure. And, and I'd like to hear from both of you how you see Accelerate unfolding, how you see the incubator uh, movement unfolding five, ten years down the road. What, what do we see here in Long Island? What's it going to be like? Well, it, it, it goes to the issue of how you define success. And you can define success a number of different ways. You can say we've started X amount of companies. We've attracted Y amount of venture capital. But I would suggest to you that the way we should be defining success on Long Island is that buzz issue. Mm -hmm. Are people talking about Long Island? You know, are there articles about energy that's happening on Long Island, entrepreneurs that are successful on Long Island, a place where young people want to live and, and, 
and, and have some fun. Um, and, and, you know, whether that's an article in the Wall Street Journal or whether it's a, a tweet on TechCrunch, mm -hmm. I don't know how that manifests itself. Or the Long Island Business Report. Or the Report. Long Island Business Report. Well, we're, we're starting <laughs> here. Um, but it's, it, it becomes viral. Yeah. It becomes infectious. Right. Uh, I shouldn't say that with Cold Spring Harbor on my board, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> uh, but, the, uh, but that's, I think, how we would define success. I see. Okay. Mark, real I, I completely agree with what Mark said, and ultimately, it comes, buzz comes down to stories of successes. And so, having these identifying and finding and identifying those successes that are happening might not be well publicized, but they are happening. Okay, uh, that's that's how the story buzz happens. So, PR, marketing, and getting the job done and getting the word out there. Yeah, that's going to make the big difference. Yeah, you got it. Well, listen, it was great talking with both of you. You're going to be again. back here again, and some of your friends and colleagues will okay. be as well. Uh, really, thanks uh, so much for the insights today. And that is it for our discussion on the next generation of business on Long Island. Thanks uh, very much to Mark Lesko and Mark Fasciano for discussing the future outlook of Long Island's business climate. For more on the Long Island Business Report, log on to our website. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter. I'm Jim Paymar. Thank you for joining us for this edition of the Long Island Business Report. We'll see you next time. Funding for this program was made possible by Charlotte and David Eckert and the Rausch Foundation.